Greetings, Redondo Beach, California. I come in the name of the Lord. Repent and be baptized, for the kingdom of heaven is near. All you here in Redondo Beach, you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want to invite you to become a Christian and be baptized in the Spirit. If you're ready to say to Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. Thank you for dying to save me. I welcome you into my heart and commit my life to you. You can say those words or something similar in your own words. And mean it. Then I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And you are now a Christian. Welcome and congratulations. Here in Redondo Beach, California, Palos Verdes also. And the whole world, for that matter, you're all invited to the table. To be saved, but some of you will not accept that offer. Some of you say no, or you laugh, or you say maybe later. I just want to let you know that if you do not accept Jesus Christ, become a Christian before you die, you will be eternally separated from him. Eternally means forever. Separate means... Separate from God means... Uh, the worst of the worst. I mean, there's nothing nothing nice or good about being apart from God. And you'll find that out because right now you don't know that. Because we have a general revelation. Partial, uh, even if you're not a Christian, you still get partial benevolence of God's presence. And so imagine a place where nobody is in the presence of God. Think of a Think of a prison where everybody, all the worst of the worst prisoners, you know, the pathological mass murderers and rapists and things like that are all put together. And they just live there forever, you know, all selfish, uncaring, unkind, greedy, self-serving people. That's what hell will be like, I, as far as I can tell, I Anything apart from God is going to be horrific. So uh, I hope you reconsider before it's too late. Meanwhile, those who said yes, it's your happy day. You probably wonder, what do you do now, now that you've uh, become a Christian? Well, the first thing you need to do is start talking to God. We call that prayer. Talk to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God, three persons. We call that the Trinity. So you're uh, talking to God as much as possible, and you're working, walking, driving, eyes open, of course, and also in church, eyes closed. It's all good as long as you're developing your relationship with Jesus through prayer, through conversation, allowing Jesus to become your friend. And uh, he already knows everything about you, and you he already knows your thoughts and your needs and things, but he wants you to express yourself using your free will. So, uh, I hope uh, you can start praying and talking to God as much as possible. And then, after you've been doing that for a while, you're not only, by the way, you're not only uh, praying for yourself and your own concerns, although that's included but when you pray you should be praying according to God's will always say thy will be done it shouldn't be a selfish prayer and, uh, and then of course you're also praying for others not just uh, of course your friends and your loved ones yeah you want their you want to pray for their well-being of course but even that we shouldn't always be praying for even our own well-being or our friends well-being but for God's will to be done to be used by God, like a potter uses the clay. We have to allow ourselves to become clay as God intended, so that he can remake us when we become Christians, according to what he wants for our lives. And you're also praying for uh, your enemies, even, or people who are doing things that are against, obviously against God's will, like terrorists, of course. 
ISIS. We're praying for ISIS. Pray for them to be converted to Christ and for their victims. Pray for their recovery if they haven't been killed, but we also pray for their souls if they have been killed. Uh, I believe in praying for the repose of the soul. I wasn't always uh, that way, but now I do on a regular basis. But that's up to you, you know. You decide whether you're going to be... Uh, it's the difference between Protestant and Catholic theology, and you'll have to work that out. I don't want to get too complicated here. And so, uh, you're praying for all kinds of different things. Also, our world leaders, our polit politicians, you know, your community. Anything and everything, according to God's will, you're praying for. Especially for the gospel to, to reach the whole world. It's part of the Great Commission. That's something you should Google. Great Commission. Find out more about that. And then uh, next, you should get a Bible. Start reading the Bible on a regular basis. It's the Word of God. Written Word of God. The Holy Bible. And, uh... Remember, as you read it, the main theme is John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes shall never die, but have eternal life. And uh, if you keep that in mind, it'll help to explain lots of other parts of the Bible, which might seem a little more heavy, deep, complicated. So the Bible is all about God's plan for his believers. Originally it was the Jewish people, though, also, the, also known as the Israelites. And uh, he, he had a special relationship with them in the beginning of the Bible. A book called Genesis. It starts with Adam and Eve. It begins with God creating the universe and the world, the earth, humans, animals, life, plants. God did that all. It was an evolution no way that could be happened just by a random chance anyways uh, begins with the Jewish people who have to uh, journey and, and try to develop a trust in God and sometimes they lose faith and they regain it then they lose it again and it's a story it's a real uh, drama and meanwhile they sin along the way and somehow they have to atone for those sins so you do something wrong, just like in our world, uh, you know, if you break the law, if you get caught breaking the law, you you have to uh, you have to be punished for it and pay the cost. And with God, everything is caught. Of course, you can't hide anything from God. And so the way he uh, originally, the rules he had for the Jewish people at that time was that they when they for certain sins, every now and then they had to sacrifice uh, an animal, usually like a lamb or a goat, for their sins. And then they would be atoned again at one with God. And then it would slowly, sin would creep in again. And so they'd have to do that on a regular basis. But then Jesus came, the Son of God, who was also God, and he uh, was crucified on the cross for our sins and he was often referred to as the uh, Lamb of God and he was the one time sacrifice for all our sins for the whole world past present future but it's only it has no effect if you do not believe so only those who believe can have their sins atoned for and even then, uh, for us as Christians who believe and have our sins forgiven, we probably we will sin again. I'm mean, not probably. None of us are perfect. None of us. The only uh, sinless person ever on earth was Jesus Himself. Although Catholics argue Mary as well, so that's a theological argument. And uh, <clears throat> nonetheless, we'll as Christians. <clears throat> continue to sin. Hopefully less. You're sinning less, though. 
and you're growing in Christ, growing in faith, becoming more holy over time. And uh, thanks to God, we have the gift of His Son for our sins. So that's what it's all about. If you read the Bible, and then you, begin, you come to the New Testament, that's where the story of Jesus begins. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the Gospels, as we call them. And uh, read those little by little. They are re uh, repetitive in some places. They're telling the same story, but in different words and a few different things that uh, the different writers witnessed and experienced and wrote about. So they're not exactly duplicates. Uh, and then finally, to help you understand the Bible, even, uh, even you know, you won't be able to understand everything perfectly all by yourself. You'll need some help. So there's, uh, that's why you need a church, not only just to understand the Bible, but for fellowship with other Christians. You know, you need to be amongst others, other Christians, uh, to build you up, to, to give you confidence, to help you when you're grieving, and for you to help others as well. So find a good church, I encourage you to find one that affirms traditional values, meaning at least uh, one man, one woman marriage and protection of unborn life. God is against abortion. It defies his character. He wants us to protect others and take care of others and help others and be care, uh, have care and kindness for others. Uh, not just other Christians, but especially other Christians, but also all people hard thing to do sometimes. We have enemies, we have people who, are, who treat us wrongly and badly, and the normal uh, human nature is to take revenge on that, to strike back. God, Jesus said, turn the other cheek. It's not always easy, but with Christ, with the presence of the Holy Spirit, we're able to uh, endure humiliations and persecutions sometimes that you would not normally be able to endure it uh, just by your own human self. And in America, where I am, you know, we don't have to endure uh, usually martyrship and you know, actual death for our faith. We endure other types of hardships and humiliations. But around the world and other places, especially in the Middle East, Christians are actually being killed for their faith. So we pray for them especially. God be with them and bless them. Hear our prayer, Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so you have a good church, you have a Bible, and you're praying, and you're on your way. That's the beginning of the Christian faith journey. I'll be praying for you. I'll be with you and bless you. Or you can message me anytime with questions or for a free Bible. I forgot to tell you, you can get a Bible uh, at bookstores, at libraries, read it online. Some churches will give you one for free or from me on YouTube. That's all for now. Hear my prayer, Lord, for all the new Christians here in Redondo and Palos Verdes.